Starting today, you can technically watch a single episode of Setup Wars for every day of the week without taking any breaks. That is actually wild. But with that said, welcome to Setup Wars episode 365, the show where your battle stations get judged by eyes all around the world. Make sure to buckle up though, because we have another banger episode cooked up for you. Sit back and relax and let the Setup Wars begin. These earbuds can be used during meetings, do live transcriptions, and even translate in real time. They might just become your personal assistant. The Vime Rec Dot earbuds not only allow you to listen to your Roblox rap battles in high quality, but also act as a recorder for meetings and phone calls. Simply long press the sensor on either earbud and they'll start capturing whatever you're hearing. This could be live meetings, phone calls, or even a video you pull up on your phone. All of these are transcribed in real time and can be translated directly into 16 languages, coming very handy during travel. The built-in Vime AI can also create a summary, highlight key points, and turn the whole thing into a to-do list. Of course, you should always let the other party know that you're recording, but if you're someone who constantly has phone call meetings or doesn't remember the grocery list the wifey gave on the phone, the Rec Dot will be a huge time and lifesaver. And when you're done, simply turn on the active noise cancellation up to 48 decibels and enjoy some bangers. Check them out by clicking my link down below. Kicking out the show is a familiar face. Julian is actually an active supporter on our Discord server, and he first appeared on the show in Setup Wars episode 347 almost a year ago. He's now back with a more laid back and walnut toned vibe. If you guys missed that episode, feel free to go back and check it out. But just to recap, Julian is a 3D animator building his own game and slowly assembling a team around him to turn his dream game into a reality. Once again, I want to wish you huge success on your game development, and once it's up and running, you know, uh, just slide a key my way. Coming back to the setup, you can see that all the blue LEDs and the dark accents have now been replaced with warm walnut. This includes the desk, the speakers, the PC case, and even the flooring. Julian swapped the color scheme after the old lighting started giving him headaches, and he drew inspiration from setup wars. I swear everyone and their grandmothers are slowly converting into the wood aesthetic. Like don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the wood look, but I just can't see myself giving up the clean white aesthetic. Maybe at least for the next two years. He's running dual IKEA Carably countertops as the base now, but the hardware up top is largely unchanged. The monitors are still the same, we got the Odyssey Neo G9 and his XP pen drawing tablet, while the peripherals got a slight upgrade as well. He's now rocking a custom Keychron V6 keyboard with a Razer Bass Lisk X mouse resting on our beautiful TS Citadel mouse pad. Right above the monitors is where we find the Klipsch Bluetooth speakers, a beefy upgrade compared to his previous Logitech G560s, and I gotta say, the copper woofers really match the walnut theme here. To the right is where he keeps the PC, which has also seen a slight upgrade. He went with the OG wood case, the Fractal North XL, and is still rocking an i9-14900K, but he dropped to a 4070 Super instead of a 5080 like he was initially planning. He unfortunately had to downgrade the GPU, but is now on track on getting a 50 series card and also upgrading his G9 monitor. Cable management is once again pristine. All the wires pass through a grommet, straight into a raceway, and disappear in the space between the two Alex drawers. No extra slack and no power strips in sight. He even rerouted the ethernet cable through the wall and ceiling instead of going across the door molding like it was with the previous setup, making the room a lot cleaner cleaner. Talking about clean, the right side of the setup seems a little bit empty, but it doubles as a guest station and a spot where he can work on his rig. Now there are some plans of potentially putting a mini PC setup there, so I'm excited to see what he comes up with, 
nonetheless, it was a pleasure seeing you back on the show, Julian. Thanks for sharing this with us and best of luck with the game. Keeping the wood vibe rolling, we have CJ, a mechanical engineering technician from Indiana who's also an active supporter on our server. One glance tells you he loves two things, whiskey and cars. I mean, come on, we've got motor oil on both sides of the setup as decor and framed photos of his custom automotive build sitting on a wooden shelf. Los Santos Customs called, they want their royalties. Cars aren't the only custom thing here. CJ prefers making things to buying them. So he went all in with a hand-built desk, cut to fit wall slats, a custom wooden pegboard, and it took him about 10 months to build his own vintage style den. He's rocking two displays. We got a 27 inch Asus Tough as the primary and a 15 inch 1080p monitor from Arzopa below it as a secondary. Even though the main screen is on a mount, CJ still built a wooden riser, which adds another rustic touch while helping him stash his gear on top and underneath it. The peripherals stay on the retro theme, an 8-bit though keyboard paired with a low free mouse on top of a bronze leather mouse pad. Cable work is nothing short of immaculate, check this out. Nothing shows from the front, but the back, oh my lord. Everything is attached to the custom backboard and bundled properly, so whenever he needs to switch something out, he won't need to take the whole thing apart. Beautiful. To top it off, he also installed a warm LED bar underneath the desk to light it up from below and give it a nice soft glow. The PC powering it all is a Micro ATX build inside the Lian Li A3 case featuring a Ryzen 5 9600X and an ASRock RX 7800XT. I just love how he covered the PCI cables for the GPU with a white sleeve and also installed a custom 6 inch screen right in the front of the power supply. These are small details that tie everything together so nicely. This setup is a perfect representation of CJ's craftsmanship and passions, balanced in a clean and cohesive layout. Thank you CJ for sharing this with us. Up next we got another fellow content creator. John is a longtime YouTuber and musician whose setup journey predates some of you guys watching right now. The space is of course built primarily for music production, however he does occasionally lean back and enjoy some single player story based games. Since this is a musician's den, live looping and mixing gear is everywhere. I'm counting at least 6 MIDI keyboards and synths, 3 launch pads and audio interfaces and mixers. It is a hardware playground. But let's get to the main setup. The main monitors are actually twin 55 inch LG TVs and from what I see John uses them for plugins and DAW controls for his instruments. The musical den wouldn't be complete without studio monitors. So we've also got the JBL LSR sandwiching the displays with the DT770 Pro headphones hanging underneath the desk. The peripherals are all from Corsair. We got the K65 Plus wireless keyboard and an M75 mouse. There is no mouse pad unfortunately and he did say it needs replacing. John, if you're watching this video, hit me up on Discord or on Instagram and I'll send you a free tech source mouse pad of your choice. With so much hardware, cable management is understandably tricky, so I'm not surprised that it's a little all over the place. Most lines run along the floor and gather in circular bundles, which isn't ideal, but it's organized enough to avoid any tangles. It obviously wouldn't be my first go-to, but it is a sensible compromise, especially when you're constantly switching gear in and out. In all the chaos, we cannot miss that gorgeous custom loop build packed with an i7-13700K and an ASUS TUF RTX 4070. Besides the PC, there's also a MacBook Pro and an iPad, all wired to the same MIDI interface, keeping everything on one reliable signal path. I do have to say, with the lights turned off and the RGB fired up, the room transforms into a neon studio worthy of any synth wave soundtrack. Personally, I would have loved to see a clip of the lighting reacting live to your music, but even in some photos, the vibe is still there. Best of luck with your projects, John, and thank you for participating. Now that is a banger intro, god damn! 
This is low key how every setup should make an introduction on setup wars. But then again, this is Mary Jen setup, so I didn't expect anything less. Quite a lot of you will know Mary Jen. OG viewers will recognize his name from episode 231, where he took home the seal of approval. That name will echo for the rest of eternity. You might have seen his setup pop up on your IG feed at some point. Or if you're on my Discord server, you might have seen him get crowned for the setup of the month back in May of this year. And real quickly, for those of you who are new to the channel, the setup of the month is a contest we run on our Discord server where we take a specific theme each month and invite you to participate if your setup meets the theme criteria. August will be locked for setup of the year where the previous 12 winners will compete against each other. And in September, we will kick it off with year two with the theme TechSource mouse pads. So if you own a TechSource mouse pad, then you can participate starting the month of September. So if you guys wanna join, I'll leave a link to my Discord below, but please make sure to read the rules before you do anything else in the server. You'll thank me later. Anyways, back to the setup. Like I said, Marujan already holds a seal of approval, a setup of the month title, and now he's going for the setup of the year title on our server. Best of luck to you, my guy. He's still a part-time software developer and a videographer that puts out some high production value content. I mean, the photos we have here are more than proof of that. But if you're not following him on IG, then you are seriously missing out. I'll drop a link to his IG below. Make sure to stop by and say that Ed has sent you. Based on his profession, he would naturally have a fitting setup to go alongside it. But what's changed since last time? Well, the massive wall of black acoustic panels and the wave wood diffusers are still there. The sit and stand frame with the IKEA countertop remains, but now the triple displays are gone. And in their place are dual stacked ultrawides mounted to the desk. We have a 34 inch LG on top of a 40 inch Dell panel. The desk space is super clean and Logitech is still the main choice for peripherals with the MX Master 3S and a G915 TKL. I can tell these photos were definitely taken before he won the setup of the month contest as one of the prizes was actually a TechSource mouse pad. That original Topo Black looks pretty battle scarred, but the fact that you've been rocking this for over four years now proves how good the quality of our pads are. I did ask Marajan to provide an updated pick with the new mouse pad, which I'll include in this video. As a content creator, the rest of the gear looks solid. We got two stream decks, some key lights, an Electro Voice microphone, and a Sony FX3 camera for recording. For audio, he's still running the Wavemaster 2 Pro speakers, but when it's time to lock in, he swaps to the pair of Sony XM5s hanging on the key light. One thing that already stood out in his previous submission was the lighting. I won't name everything, but I'll ask Mallory to show the full list on screen while we go through the photos. With a single button press, he can actually flip the room's mood entirely. You get instant ambiance, which is perfect for holidays, creative freedom, or just trying out a new theme. The setup nails that sweet spot where aesthetics meet functionality. Cable management as expected is magnificent. They're perfectly managed underneath the desk with the help of a couple signum racks, velcro ties, cable clips, and cable spines, allowing him to change the height of the desk without worrying about the wires. The only thorn in his side are the visible cables coming out of the PC onto the right. Now there are a few solutions that you can look into, like 90 degree connectors, so long as they don't block neighboring ports, of course. A simple sleeve to hide the cables in one clean line or even a custom 3D printed channel. If the latter sounds interesting, I'm sure you could reach out to Danny on our server to figure something out that would both look cool and work as well. Interestingly, the PC is mostly the same. It's still built inside the NZXT H500, housing an i9 9900K and a tough RTX 3080. It still does the job for 4K editing, so he's holding off on a full rebuild until next year. Man, what can I say? I expected greatness, but Marijan still over delivers. I wish I had more time to dissect every single little detail here, but even such things like having USB ports mounted below the monitors or a hidden HDMI adapter for quickly connecting a third display, like every micro detail serves workflow. I remember saying something a while back along the lines of it's very easy to toss a bunch of gear together and build a setup, but to build one that has synergy takes effort and dedication. That statement still holds true even till today. It's always a pleasure having you on the show, Marijan. Thank you for participating.
Until the very end, this episode keeps the hype pedal floored, and nothing proves it better than our next returning contestant. The name Victor should ring a bell for some of you guys as he first appeared in episode 356, but the bright setup with a reading nook is history now. And instead, we got a brand new man cave forged from drywall, MDF, and pure imagination, inspired by Star Wars and Britney, who you guys might know as Nate Tesseract. He and his brother built everything themselves with no big budget contractor. Just careful planning, handmade decor, and using accessible materials you can simply get on Amazon. The setup has this gorgeous custom backdrop that looks straight out of a starship viewport, but with the wooden hexagon panels in the middle. To create that shape, Victor mounted them to a wooden base and lit them up with hidden LEDs. For displays, he switched to a stacked layout. The 32-inch curved gigabyte from his old build up top and a 39-inch ASUS OLED as the primary. Now, because the desk is well mounted, he made the right call to mount both monitors to the wall as well, keeping the surface clear for his audio gear and stream deck without overloading the desktop. We unfortunately didn't get any close-ups of his peripherals, but he is running a Keys Me Lunar keyboard and a Gravistar Mercury M1 mouse on our TechSource Cyber White mouse pad, complementing the space theme beautifully. Besides the edifier speakers, he also uses a pair of Balam Rush cans which are hanging underneath the desk. Speaking of underneath the desk, as you can see, there are zero wires in sight. He hid them all behind a custom-made cover and only has three visible bundles running through white sleeves. In a way, it kind of makes them look like oxygen tubes from a spacecraft. Of course, no spaceship is complete without its engine room. It's a gorgeous white build inside the Cougar Kratis case with an i7 14700K and an RTX 4070 Super. It looks absolutely stunning for a first ever custom build. Great job. This new battle station takes the Star Wars DNA from the last setup, mixes it with a space theme, cranks it to 11, and nails every detail. I mean, the decor, the lighting, color consistency, cable management, the snack corner with its own neon sign up top, and even the small text up top with his last name and the year he was born. It's not just the collectibles and art. Every small detail is thought out and adds to the personality, making this space truly his own. What can I say, man? You came in with your lightsaber and you sliced right through the seal of approval criteria. Most people focus too much on the wow factor and they leave functionality on the table, but you nailed both so perfectly. Just a phenomenal job, my guy, and I got something special for you. A 74th seal of approval. What a voice crack. Make sure to toss me a DM or reach out to one of our staff members on our Discord server to claim your plaque as well as a free text or mouse pad. Again, phenomenal work and thank you for coming on the show. Another banger episode to kick off the week for you guys. I really hope you're enjoying the quality and the quantity of Setup Wars recently. If you are, make sure to toss a like to show your support. Subscribe for more Setup content coming your way and I'll see you very soon in the next one.